Hi and welcome back everyone. So I've recently had a look at procedurally generating planets from a space game I'm working on and while they look pretty nice when viewed from far, when getting close to the surface they're blurry and not detailed at all. So to be able to walk on them I need a way to get high resolution planets while keeping up the performance and the solution is called level of detail system, which I'll cover in this video. So to understand how this works, here's a simple sphere representing a planet. And when looking at it in wireframe mode, you can see many triangles aligned to form a spherical mesh. So eventually every mesh is made up of small triangles visualizing different shapes and their resolution or detail level can be defined by the amount of triangles. So more triangles mean more detail and the opposite. And the idea behind the level of detail system is to visualize the area near to the player in higher detail, meaning more triangles, and the area which is far away or the player can't even see in way less triangles to save performance. So this red capsule here is the player and you can see the area near the player is detailed in way more triangles and the further away a point on the surface gets, it decreases in resolution. And when moving the player alongside the surface, the detail dynamically adjusts to the player's position. Alright, so how do I start? As you might know from my first procedural planet video, each of the faces of the sphere is made up of a mesh node and since this type of sphere called a humble cube sphere is just basically a cube where all the vertices of the face are normalized meaning forced to have the same distance to the center to form a sphere so we can actually start off with just one 2D face of the cube and make it easier so we just need to a way to create this level of detail system on one face and can later transform it to a spherical shape. And how we split up these faces is called a quadri mesh subdivision. So let's imagine our player standing on the 2D face of the cube. And we then have to calculate the position of the center of the face to the player. And if that's below a certain value, we split up the face into four segments here. We then have these new four rectangles and again calculate the center of each rectangle to the distance of the player and if that's again below a certain value we split up the face again and so on. So let's get to work. I start off with an empty scene and create a 3D scene node called planet here and I'm going to add a mesh instance as a child which represents the one face of the cube. Let's go ahead and create a new script for this and call this planet mesh face script. And what we're going to do first is define the local up or normal position by a vector free, which determines the position of the face. So for example, here, the normal face would be 0, 1, 0 to represent the top face. So face up would be 0, 1, 0 on the y axis here. And I'm actually going to make this a tool so we can view it in, when it runs in the specter. I start off with this class which holds some values about each chunk of the face. So the first value will be the boundaries of the chunk and the boundaries are defined by an AABB. So for example, a chunk would be defined by this AA3B which is determined by the position and a size. So the position would be 0, 0, 0. So it would start at the origin of a coordinate system and the size would be how far we move along on the x, y and the z axis. You can see here this three dimensional coordinate system and the center or the 0, 0, 0 position would be the origin of our chunk. We then move along one unit on the x axis and one on the z or y and again one on the y axis. So this is the size determined by the second vector and this all together forms this cube which is the boundaries of one chunk here. Then we have this children array here, which does all the children chunks of each face. So the face would store the chunks of the smaller detailed in this children array. And we also have the variable here depth determined by the current depth. So the initial chunk depth would be zero because we haven't split up the face. And if we then split up the face again, it would be one. So that's the current depth and we also have the maximum depth determining how often we split the face. In the constructor I then just assign these values here on the top and also create with this function generate identifier a unique identifier for each chunk which is just made out of this small function right here and it just contains the boundaries position, the size and the depth to generate a unique identifier for each chunk. I then create this function called generate mesh to 
go through the process to generate the mesh and here I'm just determining the initial boundaries of a chunk and since we're making a unit cube at the moment the position is 0, 0, 0, so the origin and the size would be actually 2 by 2 by 2 because the position isn't in the center of the cube and to then actually shift the offset to minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 to get it to the center we have to determine the boundaries by 2 by 2 by 2 and because the face hasn't been subdivided yet we'll set the current depth to 0 and the maximum depth for example to 5 or 3 something like that and to store the current chunk I am define a variable called quadri up here which is a type of quadri chunk and then just set the current quadri chunk as the quadri chunk so we don't need the bounds anymore just the quadri chunk is this new chunk here and since the normal or the local up position of the face isn't the game world's up position I have to recalculate the x and y axis of this face so with these two variables here I'm calculating the axis a and b so called here by taking the vector free of the normal or the local up position and normalizing it and to get the axis b I just take the cross product of the axis a and in that way I recalculate the axis x and y of the face local position so I can then determine the rectangles. So now I want to subdivide the face into all possible subfaces. So I'm just making this quadri subdivide function here. Let's move this down a little. And here we're subdividing the face until the maximum is reached. So at first I need to get half the size of the chunk because to create this little smaller rectangle inside of the face, it has the side width of half the face. And so we have the half size here and half the size here and since our overall face is one by one and simply get the half size of the bound half and we also need the quarter size to determine the offsets of these four smaller faces and I'm just defining the half extents here and in this array here I'm storing the offset positions of each of the subfaces center. So when having a look at our face again, here's the center and we have these four smaller subdivided rectangles here and we have the size one by one. And we want to calculate the center of each of the faces to check the distance. So we go one quarter down here and one quarter down here in the array to determine the first center of the first child. and in that way we're just calculating the center of each child. I then use this for loop to loop through every child offset in this array to generate each child mesh. At first I recalculate the child position in the 2D space of the face, so that's just the bounds position of x then and the bounds position on the z axis since it's a vector true, and I add the current offset of the loop to get the center. I then calculate the center in the 3D space. I calculate this by taking the face origin, which is the normal determined, plus the child position 2D on the x-axis and multiplying this by the axis A because we have the new axis X or A here. And then I also do the same thing for the Y position, so child position 2D.Y to get this new center of the subdivided face in the 3D space. So I'll add these variables to the call function subdivide. So I add the face origin, which is the normal, the axis A and the axis B calculated from earlier on, and put this up in the call subdivide function here. And, and I just have to adjust the function I'm calling this by putting in the face origin and the axis and the values. So next up, I can calculate the distance to these new child centers to check if they're below the threshold. So I'm just doing this by taking the center local 3D and distance to the focus point. And now I can check if the distance is below the threshold, but first I'll check if the current depth is less than the maximum depth, because otherwise I want to return. So I check this here, and then with an end function, I'm checking if this distance is for example here I use the bound size x which is as you might remember 1 so times 0.75 so 75% of this phase so if the player would be below 
0.75 units away from the center of the face, or of the whole face, it would split up. So all good, we split up the face and the first thing we have to do for the new face is calculate the new sizes in the bounds. So I say child bound is a new AABB vector and the position is a vector free with the child position 2Ds and the y axis just left on zero because it's in 2D space. And the size is the half extends. That's the new bound and position of the new child. I then create this new child with the new created bounds and also add this to the children's array of the chunk and or call the subdivide function for the new child so it subdivides until this if statement isn't true anymore and in that case we have this else here where I recalculate the child bounds of the last valid or of the last child we want to add to our list. It's nearly the same as up here, just with this little exception that we'll subtract the quarter size of the chunk to only make this one happen. And then as up in the if, we create a new child and add this to the children with the only exception that we don't call the subdivide function here again. So we're done with the calculations of this phase and that's the whole subdivide quadri function for this phase. I then create this list up here which stores all the chunks created and also the current chunk list. This is used to then later determine the modified chunks and only delete the modified chunks or redraw the modified chunks. So I'm calling this current chunk list here setting it to zero. And here the rectangles of the phase are drawn. So I call this function here and create this new function and I'm passing the chunk of course, the face origin of course, the axis A and axis B as well. I then pass these values in the call function here. So now all the necessary parameters to draw this function are set. This little code here just does this what I explained. It identifies the chunks which have been modified, which I'll add later on and just redraws the chunks that have been modified. So the whole face doesn't have to be redrawn. So then I'm getting the size and the offset of the chunk. And here I calculate the four corners of the rectangle. So here imagine this XY graph and here I'll visualize the corners. So the first corner would be at one one because the offset or let's imagine this chunk here to be a one by one chunk. So we'll, these corners represent the four corners of the rectangle. Here you have the first corner. Let's imagine the size would be one. So the first corner would be the offset, the size, so it would be two. So then we have the second corner and so on to determine these four corners of the rectangle. Now I create this vertices array where I store all the vertices of the rectangle and I loop for the corners and then calculate the position in 3D space and this indices array here is needed because here is the rectangle visualized and as we know all, everything has to be drawn in triangles so let's build it up the rectangle into this triangle and the corners would be 0, 1, 2 and 3 and the indices basically determine in which order the triangles are drawn so it has to be assigned clockwise to draw the face on the correct side. So in that case, that would be the first triangle on the left here, which would be determined by zero, two and one. And the other triangle would be as well a clockwise order. So it would be zero, three and two. And that's how this indices array works. I then go ahead, create this array and resize it to maximum and I just basically apply the vertices and the indices to this array because the structure gives me the option to create an array mesh and I just overwrite the surface material of this array mesh with my created array. So then create a new mesh instance and add this as a child of the mesh instance and I then go ahead and loop through all the children to visualize their crow trees as well. So I just recall this function with these parameters. And now all that's left to do is call this 
generate mesh function in the ready function. So it's visualized when entering the scene. And now I can run the script and we can see the mesh which is drawn, but it isn't centered correctly. I have this mistake here. This in the subdivide function here where I create a new child bounds, I have set the position to child position to the X, zero and Z. But as the child position to the vector is only a vector two, it has to be Y instead of Z. So let's just change this up. And when reloading the scene, there we have it. We have a perfectly centered face of the cube. And now to check if the LOD system works, we can go over to the focus point and set this to one on the Y axis, for example, and reload. And we can see the focus point of the face is in the center. So the subdivision works perfectly fine. And now to get a full cube, all that's left to do is to duplicate the face and adjust the normal position. So for the bottom, it would be minus one on the y axis and for the left side it would be one on the x axis and just to make sure to leave the rest on zero so i just adjust this for each face and rename it and that way we get the full unit cube with the lod system featured now to make this a sphere just head over to the code again and that at that position where we apply the position to the vertices array and just normalize the position so the point on the cube is just forced to have the same distance to the center and in that way we form a sphere so that's how this basic system of procedurally generating planets with including LOD works. There's still a lot to do, like fixing the edge gaps, which occur between different subdivided faces in the mesh, and as well as dynamically adjusting the LOD system so it works when the player is moving around. But that's for another part. This is it with this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful for you. Leave a like and subscribe to stay hooked with the channel. And hang in for the next episode where I modify this to really create procedural generated planets, which you can use for your own projects.